Okay, so let's get started here. In this video, we'll focus on getting Paper.js set up and doing some simple, simple animations. So no audio just yet. First thing I'll point out, I'm in a new directory I created. I added that sounds directory in here. So make sure that you don't have to do it necessarily for this video because we won't be playing the sounds, but if you want to follow along, make a directory and make sure you drag or copy that sounds folder into it. The next thing we need to do is make our file. So I'll make a file, save it into the correct directory, and I'll just call it circles.html. We'll add in our HTML skeleton, of course, just like that. And we'll leave it at that for now. So let's just open it up. Shouldn't really see anything. Now let's go to paper.js. Again, I really love this one, but we're gonna move away from this and we're gonna go to download to start. And the first thing we'll do is just download the most recent version, which I've actually already done. So when you're done with that, it will look like this. And the first thing we can do is just take a look in the examples directory. Let's take a look at animated, animated star. Pretty fun to play around with this. Makes me dizzy, so I'm gonna shut that off, but you can take a look at some of the other ones as well. Candy Crash. So there's some cool animations you can do. There's a little physics involved here. What else do we have? This cool line animation and a whole bunch of other ones. Oh yeah, I really like this one, this kind of parallax effect as you move your mouse. Okay, so we could spend hours doing this. There's lots of great examples. You can open any of them up if you wanna take a look at how it works. So let's look at that space one. First thing that you'll see is that we're including paper.js. We need that file, of course, the library, just like we need for jQuery. But there's something that you haven't seen before, which is that we have a script type equals text slash paper script. So there's a, a particular type of file or script that we can write called paper script that is a domain specific language, which is basically, it's a language that is made specifically for paper.js. So it's not something that will work unless we have paper.js included. And then you'll also see this canvas attribute, canvas equals canvas. So this is kind of weird. What a canvas is, it's a, an HTML element so it's actually where everything that we do, I'll show you, I'll inspect this right now. This is the working version or the final version. If I take a look, first, I'll just show you how it works again. If I take a look and I inspect this black background, it's not the body, it's something called a canvas. A canvas is an HTML element that basically acts as a place to do animations and graphics. So if I go to MDN and I look for canvas, you can see that added in HTML5, the HTML canvas element can be used to draw graphics via scripting in JavaScript. So that's really all it is. It's an element canvas that on its own without JavaScript, it really doesn't do a thing. But then we go and add JavaScript to say things like make it rectangle here, make it green, make a 3D shape here, do this animation. And we do that all with JavaScript. So paper.js uses a canvas element it's the stage, it's where it adds in all the animations and all the graphics. So we need to have a canvas on our page, as you can see for the space example. If I go to the very bottom, the only thing in the body is this right here, a canvas. And it has ID equal to canvas, and also the background set to black. So ID equal to canvas corresponds to this line right here, canvas equals canvas. So we're just telling this paper script file or this paper script script what ID to look for, which in the example, they just named it canvas. So we're gonna do something very similar to this, but before we get there, we need to make sure we include paper.js. So I'm gonna go to the download, and rather than opening examples, we're gonna look in dist, and then we can pick either paperfull or paperfull.min. And I'll just do the full one here. So I'm gonna copy that over into our directory. So paper-full.js, then in our own app, we need to make sure to include that. So source equals paper-full.js, just like that, and save. And then what we'll do is just refresh the page in Chrome, 
make sure we don't get an error. Great, so it found the file just fine. Now let's go to paper.js's docs and look at tutorials. So I actually didn't do this early on, but I do want to read the description of what paper.js is. So it's an open source vector graphics scripting framework that runs on top of the HTML5 canvas. It offers a clean scene graph slash document object model and a lot of powerful functionality to create and work with vector graphics and Bezier curves, all neatly wrapped up in a well-designed, consistent, and clean programming interface. So kind of a mouthful. Basically, it's a kick-ass drawing library, animation library, graphics library that's really pretty popular. There are a few of them out there. Uh, so it's not, it's not like jQuery where it's pretty much the one DOM manipulation library, uh, the one event handling library. There are a lot of animation and graphics things out there, but paper is, is I'm pretty confident in saying it's the most popular. Okay, so let's go back to tutorials and take a look at um, getting started, I think. Yes, getting started, working with paper.js. And we'll scroll down and take a look at their example here. So what we could do is copy this entire thing in, but I want to do it one piece at a time so that you see how it works. So let's start by copying this canvas. Just copy the whole line and we'll put it in our body. So canvas ID equals my canvas. And if I refresh the page, we won't see anything at all. If we inspected, we would see there is a canvas there. But if we go back, let's copy this script. Text or type equals text slash paper script. Canvas is my canvas. And let's put that in here and paste. So if we look at what's happening here, there's some nice comments. It says that it creates a paper.js path to draw a line. So we make a path. And you're going to see a lot of syntax here that you've never seen. And again, that's the point. The point is that I'm forcing you to see some new things, to read the docs, to, to kind of desensitize you to this feeling of, um, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never seen this code before. I don't know how it works. That's kind of the point of library. You don't have to know how it works, especially for something like animations. Just be glad that someone else has taken care of it for you. I definitely am. It saved my life a lot of times. So we uh, create a new path here, save it to a variable. We change the stroke color to be black. And then we create a point for the start at 100 comma 100. And then we move our path to that start. And then we draw a line to start plus 100 X and negative 50 Y. So I'll show you exactly what that does, but it draws a line starting from 100, 100, and then it moves that line or it connects that uh, first point to 300 comma 50. So if we take a look, make sure everything is, is working. If we refresh, we end up with a line. So the best thing to do when you have something new like this is play around. So try changing this so it's red and start is now 0, 100. There we go, we just moved our line. Or let's change this to be something more drastic, like 500. So you can play around with this all day long, uh, but what I want to really point out is that we're creating a paper script script, not text slash JavaScript, paper script, and we're setting this canvas attribute. Canvas equals my canvas, which is the name or the ID that we assigned it. So these have to match. And the whole point of that is just to tell this paper script file where to draw things, what canvas to use. So we could play around quite a bit more, um, and I highly recommend that you stop the video and take a look at the tutorials, try some other things. So I'll just point you towards paths, predefined shapes, which is uh, what we'll be using. We're going to be making circles with our application here. So this is what we'll need to do. Let's just copy this code right here. So pat new path dot circle, and then you have to give it a point to make a circle at, and then the radius it looks like. So you can see there's an explanation. So it needs a center point, x 100, y 70, and a radius of 50, and then a fill color. So let's take a look. Just copy this to the bottom of our code and see what happens, which is kind of what you do a lot with paper.js and similar libraries. You just experiment. So let's change radius to be 10. 
there you go. So we could also try doing another circle by just copying this down to another line. Let's call it var circle two equals new path dot. And let's make this one really large and purple. So new point, and let's put it at 50 comma 50. And it's gonna be huge, so we'll give it a radius of 300. And then circle two dot fill color equals purple, just like that. Refresh, and you can see we end up with a gigantic circle that you actually can't tell how big it is because our canvas hasn't taken up the entire width of our screen. So let's do that next because we do want that. We want our canvas to take up the entire width. So we'll go and make a new style sheet. So we'll add a link tag here, href equals circles.css, which doesn't exist. And then let's save a file called circles.css. And what we'll do is add in canvas with 100%. And let's also give it a background of black. And if we refresh, you can see we're close, but we have a few things. The first of which is that our body doesn't actually go all the way down. So our canvas takes up 100% of the width. But even if we give it 100% height right now, it's not going to actually change the way that we want it to. And then we also have this margin that we want to get rid of. So rather than spend too much time going over that, I'll just show you what we need to do. We'll just set height to be 100% and margin to be zero. And if I refresh the page now, it takes up the full screen. So if you wanna go more into, into detail and understand exactly why we did that, inspect the body before we add this code in and then uncomment it and inspect the body again and you'll see what happens. Basically, we're just making sure that the body takes up the entire width and height and there's no margin, which means that our canvas will then expand to take up that entire space as well. Okay, so we created our canvas now. That's really the last thing I'll do in this video. I just wanted to introduce you to how paper works. We have paper script scripts, we give it a canvas, and then we put some code in here that you've never seen before. A lot of this I've never seen before until I made this video, or until I, I made this project for this video. I've definitely seen it before this exact video, but the point is that it's, it's new, and that's why we're doing this. It's a really important skill to be able to take code, read docs, and basically copy it in and change it. Great, so in the next video, I will be giving you a quick optional exercise. So if you just wanna to get to the project and skip the educational learning experience, whatever you wanna call it, but uh, the, the, if you wanna to get to kind of the payoff, go ahead, skip the next video. I would recommend that you do it though. We're not gonna make the most impressive thing, but I'm gonna have you do an exercise with some circles. Very exciting, I know. Okay, I'll see you then.